In this video, we will discuss 3D printing molds and cores for metal casting using selective powder deposition 3D printing method. And as a material, we'll use shell sand. Shell sand is a normal sand coated with a thin layer of resin. When you warm it up, the sand particles stick to each other. This is a very widely used material for making cores for metal casting and for making molds using shell molding. Here is a Wikipedia page that describes how shell molding works. But basically it's a very widely available material and it's very cheap. They sell it by tons. Another advantage of 3D printing with shell sand is that it's collapsible. This is especially important for making cores. And with this process you can control the collapsibility because you can control the thickness of the wall. You can make the cores hollow. Also you can control the collapsibility by choosing different uh, type of shell sand with different amount of uh, resin. In essence, this process is very similar to 3D printing with glass powder. But instead of the glass powder, glass uh, we use shell sand and bake it at about 180 degrees Celsius rather than 750. So basically, as usual, we deposit built powder, which is shell sand in our case, and support powder, which is regular sand in this case, and bake it at about 180 degrees. Let's look at each step. Oh, and another difference is that shell sand does not flow as well as metal or glass. So it's better to use slightly larger holes. For example, for model C, it's better to use 2 mm for the fine pourer and 4 mm for the coarse pourer. As for the particle sizes, for the fine shell sand we will use about 170 to 250 uh, for the fine pourer. And for the coarse pourer, we'll use around 250 to 400 microns. And for the support powder, we'll use a regular sand of just one size for both fine and rough, about 150 to 180 microns. And the reason we're using only one size of the support powder is because it simplifies recycling. When we finish pouring and baking, we can just pour out the unbound sand and reuse it. But let's start from the beginning. As usual, we start by placing the crucible and pouring the powders into the refill containers. While it's pouring, let's talk about the different types of shell sand. There are many different um, vendors of shell sand and each one is slightly different. In principle, they work very similar, though some might be uh, better than the others for some particular application and the cost might be different and they have different colors. Some are more grayish, other ones are more brownish. The ones that are based with aluminum oxide, they are black. Though the cheap ones, most common ones, they are based on quartz. And I think pretty much all of them are coated with phenol formaldehyde resin. Though 
they coated with phenol formaldehyde resin because for the shell molding it's necessary for the resin to be thermoset. But in our case it doesn't matter, it can be thermoplast. So we can use PLA in theory if somebody would make shell sand for this specific application the choice of the binder could be much larger. As usual, when it's finished pouring, we take the crucible, place it in a kiln, and bake it for a couple hours at 180 or 190 or maybe 200 degrees Celsius. Depending on the size of the crucible, it would require different baking time. Basically, the temperature inside has to reach about 180 degrees. When it finished baking and cooled down, we take it out and uh, pour the sand out. And clean it a little bit with a soft brush. And then we can pour metal into it. Here we are pouring stainless steel. Some people say that for stainless steel casting it's better to use shell sand which is based on aluminum oxide. But it looks like in our case this normal quartz shell sand worked just fine. Though I think if we would be casting titanium then yes, we would probably need alumina-based shell sand. I'm not sure you can see it in the video, but those shapes were chosen to be specifically very difficult to cast. So this is a spool, around it is a ring, and there is a pouring cup going inside the spool. So making this uh, mold traditional ways uh, would be very complicated. So now that we have seen how it works, let's see how it compares to the alternatives. The most similar methods would be the other sand 3D printers like X1 and Voxeljet. The advantage of uh, Voxeljet and X1 is the speed. They can uh, pour the sand uh, faster, at least as of today. Maybe in the future selective powder deposition would be faster, especially if we use larger holes like 10 millimeter hole which is in development right now. Surface finish, it looks like selective powder deposi deposition has a better surface finish. As we have seen, it's possible to cast the metal into the mold without any post-processing the surfaces. With a binder jet you need to brush every surface because the surface is rough, you need to smooth it a little bit uh, manually. But here you don't need to do it. And I guess the biggest advantage of the SPD versus binder jet is that the printer is about 100 times cheaper. And the sand is also cheaper than the resin. Now let's compare it to the investment casting. You can 3D print a PLA model on a very cheap plastic 3D printer and then coat it with slurry, then burn out the PLA and cast metal into it. And that would be even cheaper because a plastic PLA 3D printer can cost something like $200. Uh, 
which is of course cheaper than currently SPD printer. But a disadvantage would be that uh, with investment casting, the mold or the core is non-collapsible. So your shape would be more limited. Also, it's more labor intensive. If you're doing it manually, you would need to coat it with a slurry several times. So that can take like a week. And if you have a robot that uh, does the dipping and drying uh, automatically, this robot would probably cost more than the SPD 3D printer. As a side note, people have been asking me if they can melt the infill metal in the kitchen oven. And uh, unfortunately, there are very few metals that can melt at uh, the temperature that a kitchen oven can provide. And uh, those metals are not very practical. And you can't even sinter glass. But it looks like the temperature in the kitchen oven is plenty enough for baking the shell sand. And actually, kitchen oven has some advantages over the kiln. My kiln is not big enough to fit large crucibles like this one. The disadvantage is the smell. When I did it, I had to open the windows and still I was able to smell it. And uh, people say it might be not healthy. So I cannot give you a medical advice. Ask a doctor. I think it would be best to move the oven outside and run it outside and use it like a specially dedicated oven for this thing. This is the end of this video. As usual, feel free to reach out or share your thoughts in the comments.